Hey, how you doing? Justin back with you. Today we're going to talk about deliberately muting strings. Now, at this point we've talked a bit about muting strings when we've been playing chords, like on a C chord using your third finger to mute the thicker string, and it, you've probably discovered it doesn't take much of a touch to mute a string. Now, when you get into playing scales, if you don't do any string muting, many of the open strings will ring out when you don't really want them to. So I want to talk a little bit about the different approaches to how the strings get muted, which we're going to start by looking at the picking hand and exactly what that entails. Before we get too much into the details, I figure I should give you a bit of a demonstration so you can hear exactly what it is that it sounds like when you don't do string muting and then you do, because it's very different. So here's the E minor pentatonic scale with no muting from either hand. Here we go. There's a lot of strings ringing out there if I stop it. It's a lot of sound that was going on. Now I'll do it with some string muting, probably better than you will achieve in your first few attempts at it. I have been doing this for a little while. If you want to hear what it really sounds like, go and check out my left-handed uh, practice sessions and you'll hear it, it not working quite as well, but something like it. Here we go with no string, uh, with plenty of string muting. <laughs> No sound. And one more time with no string muting. You want single lines to be single lines most of the time. Sometimes you don't, I'm thinking, wish you were here by Pink Floyd, you've got chord tones ringing out while you play the single lines, then you wouldn't be using string muting. But if you're playing scales, most of the time you do want to mute strings. Now there's some danger here, which is if you think about it too much and you get too into it at this stage, it might just kind of screw everything up for you and you'll get too obsessed with this as an idea. It's something that's going to develop with your playing, and I feel like the earlier you're aware of it, the earlier you can start to make some progress in fixing it. But you should not expect yourself to be doing this stuff perfectly before you move on, right? This is likely to take you many weeks or months, months probably, to be able to get this stuff sorted out. So don't feel like you need to get all of your string muting sorted before you move on to the next lesson. You definitely don't. This is a longer term project and I want to explain just a little bit about how it's going to work. I'm going to start by looking at the fretting hand so that you understand how the picking hand is going to pick up the bits that the fretting hand can't deal with. So the first thing that's a little bit different, with all of the chords and things that we've been looking at, we nearly always want to use the tips of our fingers. But when we go into playing single lines, we want our fingers to be a little bit flatter so they mute the strings that we're not playing. So when we play the first note, probably there's not too much ringing out unless you've done something a bit drastic and played more strings than you should. When third finger goes down, it is straight away going to be laying down lightly and muting all of the other strings. So I can strum all of them, but there's just that one note ringing out. It's not that we aim to use the tips of the fingers. There are circumstances that where we might want to do that, but I want you to have a go right now of using kind of the more of the flat of the third finger so that it's muting all of the strings as you go down. The open fifth string, hopefully everything's still muted from that third finger. So you shouldn't have too many problems there unless, you, again, you pick too many strings or something like that. Now, when second finger goes down, it's still flat and muting all of the other strings, but it's also the tip of the second finger is muting the thickest string. So it's muting the thickest string and all of the strings, well, actually there was one ringing out there, but most of the strings underneath it. The open fourth string, again, that, you know, if we've just played that and everything's quiet and been touched, there shouldn't be too much going on here. Second finger, again, should be, it wasn't then, it should be muting the, the uh, fifth string and the notes underneath again. But now, these strings are kind of open, there's nothing touching that one, and this is where the picking hand starts to get involved by leaning and touching on some of the strings. We're gonna do a close up on that hand in just a second. So, we have the open, it goes down again, muting the fourth string and the strings underneath. 
Okay, now this is particularly important when we're coming down here. When that finger goes down, because we had this open string, when this finger goes down, it's also muting the thinner string. There's the open string. As it's going down to play that note, it's muting the thinner string. You can hear it's now gone. If I move the muting, you get all of the notes ringing out together. Then we lift that finger off, we play the open string. When second finger goes down here, on the second fret of the third string, it's muting the second string. It's how we've only got one note at a time. Because the underneath of the second finger is muting that string. Open, same thing again. Underneath of the second finger is muting the third string. Again, it's now muting all of them and the thicker string at the same time. Open, it's muting, open. So the fretting hand is doing a lot of the muting job, but not all. Now let's take a look at what's happening with the picking hand. So we play that first note. Second note comes in, that's mostly the job of the third finger to do the muting. Another downstroke. Now already, you probably can't see it, but the heel of my hand is just lightly touching now on the thicker string. As soon as I've moved on to that, that's happening. Just ever so slightly touching on the thicker string there. So it's not this big motion anymore. Now there are lots of different picking techniques. This is one of them. Okay, there, there are some guys that play with a round wrist like this and play very fast and very accurately and well and do or leave all of the muting to the other hand. I would recommend you start by just exploring the idea of the hand resting on the strings there. So as soon as you're onto that second string, at that point when you're playing that, there's a little bit of touch there, the palm of the hand is just lightly touching on that string. Now as you go down, now the palm, it's kind of this part of my palm here, that in the crux here, the, the, the very edge of my palm is just ever so lightly resting on the strings as I go down. Okay, so now at this point, it's actually pressing down on all of the strings there and keeping all of them covered. So when I'm playing that, actually all of these strings are muted, except for the one that I want to do. Now that's the basic idea. It is going to be difficult for you to do this, so don't get too hung up on making this perfect before you move on.